Hi guys and welcome to yet again another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make the puff stitch cowl. Now this cowl is like really thick and honestly I love it. And even though it's the summertime I think this is great in preparation for like the fall and the winter. So as you can see you can actually tie it and make it tight on the top and it has a nice feel to it. And I think that the puff stitches really add like a lot of texture to it so that it makes it look like you did a lot of work, but you really did it. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with our materials needed. Uh, you can use any size hook, but I used a nine millimeter hook, as well as about 300 yards of yarn. Now, note, I used super bulky yarn, and I think this project looks best with super bulky yarn. However, you can use whatever kind of yarn you want. So as always, we start off with our slip knot. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap two fingers, just kidding, we're not going to wrap two fingers, we're going to wrap our yarn around two fingers, <laughs> and just pull through a loop. And then to start off, we're going to chain 56. Now, if you have really bulky yarn, you can chain 56. However, if you don't have really bulky yarn, you can chain more or less. But just keep in mind that the amount you chain should be an even number. So, I'm assuming you guys already know how to chain, but in case you don't, all you have to do is wrap your yarn over and pull through several times until you have the amount needed. And then after you're finished chaining the amount that you need, for me it was 56, you are going to join both sides of your chain. So to do so, you're going to take the other end making sure that your chain isn't twisted and then once you get the other end you're going to put your hook through just like that and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both so that's one and then two and just double check to see that your chain is not twisted because that's very important when you actually start the piece So we're going to move on to row 1 where we are going to chain 2 to begin with. And just keep in mind, you're going to chain 2 at the beginning of every single row that you start. So chain 2, and then we are going to start our puff stitch chain 1 in every other stitch. So. To reiterate what a puff stitch is, what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and in the third chain from the hook, you're going to enter and pull through so that you have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over once again, insert your hook, pull through, and now you have five loops on your hook. Once again, you're going to yarn over insert your hook, pull through, and now you have seven loops on your hook, and then for the last time you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, and you should have nine loops on your hook. Then to finish your puff stitch you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all nine loops. After you've completed your puff stitch, you're going to chain one. And then lastly, you're going to skip the next chain. And then you're just going to repeat yourself. So we're going to do another puff stitch. Remember, it's not in the chain next to it, it's in the chain after. <laughs> so you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull through so that you have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over once again, insert your hook, pull through, 
so that you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, so that you have seven loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over for the last time, insert your hook, pull through, and now you should have nine loops on your hook. And then lastly, you're going to yarn over and pull through all nine loops. After you're finished with your puff stitch, you're just going to chain one. Then you're going to skip the next stitch and repeat until you reach the end of the row. So I'm on my last puff stitch right here. And I'm pulling through all nine loops on my hook. Then I'm gonna chain one. And to finish off my row, I'm going to slip stitch into the space that we created with the chain two at the beginning of our row. 
So I'm going to find that chain two space and I'm just going to insert my hook, pull through, and then pull through the loop that is on my hook. And this is what your first row should look like, just a bunch of puff stitches. Cute, cute, yes. <laughs> And now we're going to move on to row two, where once again, we start off our row by chaining two. So, one, and two, and then we're going to begin our first puff stitch again in the third chain from the hook. So I'm finding that third chain from the hook, yarning over, and starting my puff stitch like always. And you are going to puff stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch throughout this entire row.
And here I have just completed my last chain one. And again, I'm finding that chain two space that I started off with. And I'm just gonna slip stitch into that space. Next, we're gonna move on to rows three to 12 for me. You may have more rows, you may have less depending on how many or how bulky your yarn is. But regardless, we're going to start all of our rows off in the same way, which is by chaining two. So we're going to chain two, find that third chain from the hook, which is where my thumb is right now. Then I'm going to start my puff stitch, and we're gonna, just going to do the same thing that we've been doing for rows one and two. Nothing should change. And you're going to repeat yourself over and over and over and over again until you have the amount of rows that you want. Now I recommend doing more rows than you would for your normal cowl because since there is a tie included in this cowl, it kind of scrunches things up a bit. So you're going to need that extra space just to make sure that your cowl will look good as a whole, instead of looking scrunched up and short and weird and yeah. <laughs> so just continue on and I'll see you later. Actually no, I'll see you in like a couple minutes. <laughs> okay, good luck guys. And about two hours later, I am on my last row, which again, I did 12 rows. And I'm just finishing up my last few puff stitches. Never forget to skip a stitch. After you've completed your puff stitch in chain one, it is always important to skip the next stitch. Rah. I can't express how important that is, or else your piece will look busted. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm on my absolute last puff stitch of the piece. Pulling through all nine loops on my hook, then chaining one even though I am at the end. And lastly, I'm going to find that chain two space insert my hook, pull through to make a slip stitch. Next, I'm going to chain one. Then I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors, pull through, and then I'm just gonna cut the end of my yarn so that I can pull the string through completely and tie a knot. Next we're going to move on to the tie, which honestly is optional, so you don't have to do it if you don't want. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut equal pieces of yarn, preferably about, mine were about 60 inches. Mine were pretty long. Sorry, my cat's getting in the way. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie two pieces together, like so. So as you can see right now, I'm just measuring them out so that they are the same length. And then 
once you have your two pieces, you can tease your cat a little. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so, once you have your two pieces, you can just adjust them so that they're the same length, obviously, which they should be. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at the end, and you're going to leave about like four inches, and you're going to tie your first knot. Now this tie is basically just tying knots all the way around. You don't really have to tie knots if you don't want to, but I'm going to tie a knot, and then I'm going to move down about three inches or so. And then I'm just going to tie another knot. And then I'm going to move down another three inches and tie another knot. And so on. So you're just going to repeat that until you reach the end. Now make sure both ends have like an equal amount of yarn hanging off of them. And by that I mean that since we started off with four inches of just yarn, we should end with about four inches of yarn left. And once we finish tying our yarn, or our last knot, we are going to take our tie and we're just going to weave it through the top of our piece. Now you can really start anywhere, I don't really care where I start, and I don't really think you guys should either because it's not that big of a deal. Um, but all you're going to do is weave it through the puff stitches until you get to where you started. And once you've weaved through and you've joined both ends together, they're reunited, we can start our tassels. So you're going to cut equal strands of yarn about 12 inches in length. I cut about 10 pieces, all equaling 12 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the end of my tie. So that's where like my first knot was. As you can see, that's the end. And what I'm going to do is through that like slit between the first and second knot, I'm going to fold my tassel strings in half, put them in, put that fold inside of that like little slit between the first and second knot, and then I'm going to tie the ends through the middle of the tassel. Ah! I don't think I explained this very well, but you can see in the video. So yes, I'm pulling through just to create a knot, and then also don't forget your other strings that belong to the tie. I'm just going to pull those through as well, and just going to tighten, and that makes your tassel. And then once you have your tassel all tightened and straightened out, you can grab a pair of scissors and cut them so that they're equal in length. And then you just want to repeat with the other tassel. Unless you just want one, I mean, that's on you, if that's, you know, your style. <laughs> then go right ahead, but I'm going to repeat for another tassel. <laughs> and once you've finished, you can put your cowl on and tie it into a nice little bow and as you can see the tassels are hanging off 
And there you go. Uh, oh my gosh, looking cute. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. <laughs>